Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 13 and I'm going to discuss Gauss's Law and Symmetry. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com and also if you'd like to find out about updates and news and what I'm posting you can follow me on Twitter at AdamBT503. There are two videos previous to this which are relevant. Video number 12 and 7 I calculated the same thing which was the electric field due to a charged conducting sphere. However, in video number 7, I used, uh, I did not use Gauss's law, but in number 12, I did use Gauss's law. And we found that Gauss's law, using Gauss's law was quite straightforward, but in video 7, without using it, it was an utter pain in the face to calculate the electric field. So I'd like to remind you why it wasn't a pain in the face to use Gauss's law in video number 12. What we had was a charged conducting sphere, like this, uniformly charged conducting sphere. And... We then had to use Gauss's law, which of course is the closed surface integral of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon zero. But the only way to simplify the integral is if E is parallel, the electric field is parallel to infinitesimal area element. But I said in a previous video that the we'll say that means that it has to be parallel to the normal of dA, right? So the vector dA. Whereas it's, the, it's got to be, the electric field has to be parallel to the normal of dA. So if you'd like to know about more, about, uh, more about normals, look at my videos on vector calculus for electromagnetism. But what we found was, if we picked a spherical surface around this, around our, uh, around our charge conducting sphere, we found that we could use the area, infinitesimal area element of a sphere. And the inf infinitesimal area element of a sphere dA is in the r hat direction or the radial direction so dA does this but we also know that the electric field of a sphere is similarly radial so in that case E was parallel to A and we could take E outside of the uh, integral and just integrate dA which of course is always easy so what we try to do is come up with a Gaussian surface which makes uh, the integral easier so we, we use the phrase Gaussian surface and the purpose of the Gaussian surface is to choose a surface around your we'll say, uh, around your charge which makes E parallel to dA in general that's what you really want okay so that you can take E outside of the integral okay that's what you want to do so Gauss's law is always true but Gauss's law is not always useful. Okay, so um, what else do we know, right? There are three, in general, types of symmetry. You can have spherical sy symmetry. You can have cylindrical symmetry. Or, of course, you can have planar symmetry. And in the next few videos, what I'm going to do is give an example of cylindrical and planar symmetry. We've already done one on spherical symmetry and that was video number 12. So what you do for you is you take a surface, you make its size larger than that which is holding your charge and you, you this will make sure that E is parallel to dA. You take E outside of the, out of the, excuse me, the integral and you calculate away. So just, to, just to, to summarize, let's say we have a charge conducting sphere or a point charge we take our Gaussian surface to be a much larger uh, a much larger sphere and we use Gauss's law. If for example we're trying to get the electric field due to a wire which if, I suppose really is a small cylinder we of course use a cylinder as our Gaussian surface like this and once again the electric field of our wire is going to be radial and what is the normal direction on our, our, our the D, what is dA or what is, what's perpendicular to the air, or the normal direction on our, on our cylinder is also going to be in the radial direction. So they'll be parallel. And like I said, these were, these are parallel here as well. And finally, planar symmetry. So let's say you have an infinite conducting plane, or let's say a, 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 there, there's our plane with my terrible drawing as normal. The normal vector or perpendicular to it is going to be in this direction. Okay, let's just close it off like that. Is is going to be in that direction. So if somehow I can pick you know a box I can put a box around it 
with and I can with a, a small bit of thickness for example then I will have the normal vector of the box will be parallel to the normal vector of the uh, of the electric field because the electric field of, of a plane is of course going to be normal to it so that's what we try and do so that's all I've got to say about that thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com